Here are some of the top stories from the subreddit r slash tales from retail. A shoplifter and an angry fire department so, back when I was working at a large electronics store we had our fair share of shoplifters, some smarter than others. On this occasion, it was a beautiful spring day, and the store was bustling with activity. Good conditions, if you're a board employee or a shoplifter. A shady gentleman with a coat that magically got more and more filled out the longer he walked around started making his way towards the bathrooms. We had seen him, but there were enough customers that we couldn't get to him before he started down that hallway. My manager made it in time to yell no product in the bathrooms. This is when that wonderful gentleman decided it was more prudent to just try to bail out the fire door by the bathrooms. Unfortunately for him, reading was not his strong suit. Push to open the door, wait 5 seconds, then push again to exit. This man made it about as far as pushing the door once, setting off the loudest, most shrill fire alarm in human history. He panicked, dropped all of the product, and sprinted out the front door of the store. The customers looked around curiously for the source of the insanely ear-splitting beeping, and determined that their lives were not in immediate danger and thus, kept shopping. All the store managers were at a loss, policy is to get all the customers and employees out the store if the fire alarm goes off. But we knew it was a shoplifter, no lives were in danger. A couple of the connected home employees and I took shelter in the headphone department, donning very expensive noise cancelling headphones to preserve our dying eardrums. For the next 20 minutes people awkwardly milled about and kept on trying to purchase things while managers in a very half-assed manner walked from department to department asking people to leave the store if they felt like it. Then the fire department showed up, each firefighter climbed down from their truck to individually yell at all of the managers. It took them an additional 10 minutes to figure out how to turn off the alarm as nobody knew where the control was. All the managers, including the very wealthy and lax GM, spent the rest of the day looking like scolded children. When two stores carry the same product and customers are dumb, bad things this happened over the summer, just after a really popular product released. Our store has been out of said product for about a week, and it's getting increasingly harder to find. I'm up front at the register with my coworker when this happens. The phone rings. Kawaka answers it. Although I can't make out what's being said, it's clearly a woman, and clearly she's angry. Luckily my Kawaka is good at dealing with people like this. He's on the phone with her for a little bit, trying to discern what she's asking. Turns out she spoke with someone a few weeks ago about putting something on hold for her. Turns out it's that popular product that we are out of. Turns out she spoke with a woman. What a coincidence, I'm the only woman employed at this store, and the only one who dealt with that product. Of course I don't remember speaking to anyone about putting this product on hold. My anxiety meter jumps, I start to panic. I cannot for the life of me recall if I told a lady I'd put this product on hold for her. She's getting even more agitated, and I can almost make out what she's yelling. My coworker knows me well enough to discern just how freaked out I am. So he's trying to get more info out of the caller about the woman she spoke with, what day it was, what time, what the woman she spoke to looked like. A few minutes into the call and lo, we find that the woman had green hair. I do not have green hair, I have never had green hair. It's about now we realize that there is another store down the hall from us that sells some of the same product we do. There could very well be a woman with green hair that works there, what do we know? We don't exactly frequent that store. My coworker asks if she's sure she's called the right store. She claims yes. I'm sweating. Coworker finally puts down the phone with this lady and shakes his head. What are the odds? I ask as calmly as I can that she googled a store that sells product and we're the first ones to pop up. I'm gonna wait for her to call back, he replies. Not 10 minutes go by and she calls again. He answers again, pauses, and then tells her, not a problem, ma'am. Happens all the time. Have a good one. And hangs up. That was her? I query. He rolls his eyes. That was her. Guess what she said. What? What did she say? I think I owe you an apology. I can only goggle. You think? 
She had, in fact, called the wrong store. She had, in fact, googled and found we were the first to pop up, and found that we also sold said product. It wasn't on us. So much for panicking. I almost feel bad for the green haired woman at the other store. Almost. <laughs> almost got the law called on me for a stolen receipt. This happened yesterday. I work for a retailer slash department sort of store, and on Sunday we're usually not busy. It's also January, so we're really not busy aside from the droves of people coming in to return their Christmas gifts and make a fuss that they can't have cash back if they didn't pay with cash, the usual. I get to work in the shoe department today, so I head on over and am immediately met with an old lady, probably in her later 60s. She is there with her partner, who is another lady of similar age, and they both look like they shop in the men's department for their clothes and shoes. No big deal. So I get to assisting. Main lady, who we'll call Smallfoot for the sake of her visit, wanted to return some shoes she had bought, because they were too big. No problem. I return the shoes, and since she had paid with our in-store credit card, I just let her know it will be put back on the card and she'll be refunded. It's only after we're done that she makes a fuss and says well, where's my cash? Turns out she didn't want the credit back because she wanted to get rid of our card. This isn't that huge of a deal seeing as I can see exactly how much money went on her card and then when she's finished shopping, we can charge that amount exactly so that her balance on the card stays 0.00 and then her partner, who we'll call partner, said she'll just pay the difference since it's Smallfoot's birthday and she was going to get her something else instead anyway. Alright, well I hand Smallfoot a receipt for the return which I stapled to her old receipt as we'll need that later to do what I just entailed. I spend the next 30 minutes or so bringing shoes back and forth for Smallfoot to try on and it's a difficult process since we don't carry very many of the small men's sizes in store. We usually have to order them for the customer. During this process, Smallfoot is urging me to get down and check her toe, saying how I'm the shoe salesman here and I need to show that I know my stuff. First of all, it's a department store in which yes, I'm familiar with the brands and how to do most register things, but lady I work here part time from a seasonal gig I grabbed a couple years ago, only on the weekend, and the sort of people who are staffed in these areas are by no means a purebred shoe salesman shining a pair of legit leather shoes in their store window up in Atlanta or something. Second of all I just found this weird, since this is something a kid would have done by their parents pinching on the toes of the shoe and telling them if it's too big or not, or a wife or husband smooshing up their spouse's shoe in a similar fashion. I wing it, just to be a good sport, but like I said, I'm a cashier and the most I can legitimately do if you have a shoe size question is to put your foot on a metal measure and show you where your big toe is so you can see what to get. Gripe over, smooshing your toe in the shoe is not going to tell you anything. After we've picked out two pairs of shoes for small foot, I get to ringing them up. First I have to look up their credit card number in our system, since they apparently already tossed the card somewhere and had no plans on using it again. I then go the extra mile to run it and see if they had any back quote rewards which would give them another $10 off. Considering they probably just got it, they didn't have any rewards for me to apply, but that's okay. All I need now is the return receipt I mentioned earlier to make sure I charge them the right amount on the card. Well, Smallfoot decides that she doesn't have the receipt, and that I still had it. I do a double take around my wrap stand, looking under the few shoe boxes we had lying around, and glance into some drawers and even the trash can just to make sure I didn't swipe it off into the floor or something. When I don't find it, I'm like no ma'am, I don't have it. Could you have left it over there trying your shoes on perhaps? The fact that I dared even suggest that maybe she had misplaced her receipt somewhere, which couldn't have been far, really enraged this lady. She's got this really gruff and aggressive sort of way of expressing herself, and she comes around the register and tells me to let me dig through that trash, because y'all are no good slimy liars, stealing receipts. At this point me and my ringing mate are just speechless. I'll let her peer around the counter while I dig through the nasty trash again, 
and show her there are no receipts. Smallfoot then proceeds to accuse my ringing mate of stealing the receipt then. There was a line forming behind this as it happened by the way, and by the time we resolved it later, they had all gone however, while they were waiting I could see their eyes get big as this lady just pitches a fit about how she's going to call the law on us for stealing her GD receipt and yada yada, son of two biscuit eaters these cashiers are. Eventually the voice of reason, partner urges her to check her pockets one more time. Guess where the receipt was. After handing it to me, so I can do my thing, Smallfoot claims I need to walk away, I've got to cool down, like it was all my fault, that she was up in a huff, and ruining her blood pressure. I finish up the transaction, just as planned with partner, and with a weak smile she claims so sorry, yaddle and heads off, to find Smallfoot who's stalking up and down the aisles now, throwing angry looks at my ringing mate. And that was only my first customer experience of the day. Remember kids, grand receipt theft is a real problem in retail. I do not have an orchard out the back. I work in fairly small supermarket in Australia, and I don't know if you've heard, but our country has had a few bushfires recently. Even though I'm in West Australia, 4000 kilometers from the fires, we have had several fires of our own and several major road closures, between fires in the south and storms, and flooding in the north and the fact that we are already isolated FWA was essentially cut off from the rest of Australia for almost two weeks, which has lead to a few supply issues so stores have had no choice but to source some fruit and veg from overseas. Kueco Warrior aka REW. Me, blithely stocking mandarins. Hi, how are you today? EW. Sniff, are these from Egypt? By law we have to label where all our fresh produce comes from. Me, yes, unfortunately with the fires, I got no further. EW. Importing produce via air, may as well have caused the fires in the first place. Do you know the carbon footprint of these? Me. EW, I refuse to buy imported produce, go out the back, and get me some local ones. Me, these are the only mandarins we have. EW, don't be ridiculous, orchards keep them in cold storage all the time, get me some of them. Me, let me ask the produce manager, if he can get some. I don't care, I'm paid by the hour so out the back I go. Surprise. Surprise, no mandarins, no cold storage, no orchard, also no manager he was at lunch. Have a glass of water, off I go, I'm so sorry, but the storage ones have all been used, and the local orchards won't begin harvesting for several months and some of the eastern ones have burnt to the ground. EW, well you know whose fault that is don't you? Flying produce from overseas is incredibly detrimental for the environment which is what caused these fire in the first place. You should be ashamed of yourself. I'm shopping elsewhere. Me. Thank F for that. Good luck. As I finish the mandarins and turn to start the lemons I see they're grown in Israel. FML. <laughs> Ma'am, that register is close D. Standing there won't make it work this happened years ago, but the leaps of logic people make still amazes me. During my stint at a store, where everything costs $1 I was just getting ready to leave for the day. I was almost done ringing out the people in my line, when a lady walked up with a full cart. She took one look at my line, my co-worker's line, and proceeded to the register behind me. A register that had no till, drawer was clearly open and empty, all lights turned off, and a close sign up. Me, notices this lady is starting to put her stuff up on the belt ma'am, that till is closed. Lady, ignores me as she continues to pile her mountain of items on the belt. Me, ma'am, there's no one to ring you out. That register is closed. Lady, turns to glare at me, it will be open. Goes back to putting her stuff on the belt. Me, finishes and calls up my manager. My manager comes to grab me, and we go into the office to count my till out. Manager, is that lady waiting for someone? Me, she wants to be rung out. Manager, then why is she at a closed till? Me, I told her it was closed, but she won't move. Manager, after a thought she can wait there, I'm not opening another till just for her. So, we count my till out which takes about 10 minutes. Sign the proper paperwork, and I head to the back to grab my stuff. 
All of this took about roughly 10 to 15 minutes. Guess who's still waiting up front standing at an empty register? The lady gave me a hard glare as I walked out to go enjoy the rest of my day while she continued to wait for a cashier that was never going to show up. The next time I came back in to work apparently the lady got so fed up with waiting she left the store with all her stuff still on the belt. <laughs> Customers end up in a shouting match. I used to work in a stationery shop in the UK that gets a lot of customers from the older generations and a lot from regular customers that come in every day to buy their newspaper and lottery tickets ECT. There was one man, henceforth called Bicycle Man, in particular that I often chatted to as I served him. He would like to complain about this and that, with a too confident attitude and a belief that everyone else was wrong. However Bicycle Man was quite amiable and loved to chat, so I didn't think much of him. On this particular day, I was serving an older lady who was buying lottery tickets, and Bicycle Man was behind her in the queue with his wife. The lady paid for her tickets and got halfway out of his shop before she turned around and asked, Actually, could I have my receipt? By this point, I was halfway through scanning Bicycle Man's items through the till, so I cancelled the transaction and retrieved the receipt for the woman. I don't remember the exact words but this is a pretty good rendition of what happened. Bicycle Man. Excuse me? Receipt lady, I'm just getting my receipt. Bicycle Man. This lady was serving me. You had your chance. Receipt lady, the girl didn't give me a receipt. I need it. Bicycle Man. It's very rude to interrupt someone mid-transaction. You should have waited until later. Receipt lady, you're very rude. That's Bicycle man. I'm very rude. I'm very rude. Just leave. Go on. You've got your receipt now. About this time the gentleman behind him started trying to calm the situation down, and Bicycle man started arguing with him as well. Receipt lady didn't want to leave until she had the last word. It was absolute chaos, three seniors yelling full force at each other in the middle of the shop. The last I heard was Bicycle Man shouting with absolute fury, and yes, I'm older than you. I honestly thought they were about to start punching each other. Jeez guys, you're all 65 plus years old, and I'm dealing with children arguing over a receipt. Needless to say, Bicycle Man spent the next few days apologizing for the other woman's behavior at every opportunity and lamenting how rude and uncivilized she had been towards me. <laughs> Bathing suits and biohazards. I spent a year and a half working as a manager in a clothing and accessories store back in 2014 to 2015. While I was there I accumulated a handful of great customer stories, but none top this one. I was the closing manager at this store. I was always the one locking up, closing caches, helping my co-workers tidy change rooms and refold clothes at the end of the night. As some of you in clothing retail might know seasons come quickly in fashion. Spring clothes are often released in Feb to March, at least where I live, which is Canada. My store had put out their bathing suit line for the year in early March, which is still quite cold and snow covered where I live. One night at work, I gave the girls the green light to start closing duties 45 minutes early. There was a snowstorm going on at the time and the store had been pretty dead all evening. I decided I'd take the change rooms and worked away at cleaning the mirrors, rehanging things, the usual. Time flies back there and now it's 10 minutes to close. Change rooms are spotless. Everything's ready to go. All of a sudden a girl my age, I was 22 to 23 at the time, rushes in because she needs a bathing suit for her resort vacation in two weeks, in the middle of a snowstorm. I didn't mind, everything was ready to go. How bad a mess could she leave in the dressing room, shouldn't be a long fix it's just her. She took her time picking out a room full of easily tangled string bathing suits, and then took her dear sweet time trying them on. She finally left about 20 minutes after we closed with none of the bathing suits she took into the change room. Store policy wouldn't allow us to make customers leave if they were in the store before we closed. The girls and I breathe a sigh of relief that she's gone and head to the change room to tackle the tangled pile of bathing suits she surely left on the floor. We find a huge heap of tangled bathing suits on the floor yes, but we also found something much worse. 
I guess she thought her used, smelly, bloody pad was cramping her style and wasn't giving her a accurate fitting because she peeled it off and she stuck it to the wall of the dressing room. It stank. It really stank. There were no gloves to be found. I had to wrap my hands in what must have been 6 or 7 shopping bags and had to peel it off the wall. We saw one bright yellow bathing suit in the pile on the floor with a skid mark, so we didn't even touch them. We just wrote off the whole pile and trashed it. I still think about this often. She was the only one in the store. Did she think we wouldn't know it was her? I don't think any of us will ever forget her face. I live in a small community and have actually passed her in public since this incident. Can you please stop throwing up? You're making the customers uncomfortable. I was reading a post on Reddit and was reminded of this anecdote when I worked for a big box retail store. We had blackout days around the holidays where, unless you were literally hospitalized, if you didn't show up to work you were written up twice and at risk of losing your job. I unfortunately came down with a virus or the flu mid-season and was throwing up constantly. I tried to call in when I was threatened with the above action, so I dragged myself into work and set up a stool and trash can next to me. I would have to stop mid-interaction with customers to vomit into said trash can, and this went on for a few hours before one of my newer managers approached me. M. What are you doing? Me. Trying to tough it out until closing. M. Well, can you please stop throwing up? I'm getting customer complaints, and it's making them uncomfortable. Me. I'll get right on that. I was so blown away all I could do is just sit there in shock. I ended up calling my general manager and had the assistant repeat what he just asked me and my GM was like, what the fuck is wrong with you, sent her home. My shift manager argued he had no one to cover and my GM made him cover my shift so I could leave. I don't miss retail. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more videos see you all later.